sell me a piece, so. <laughs> I'm also glad that somebody from Main Street is there. Thanks. Yep, yep, apparently Kenny is out of town, so. Okay, well, it, it looks like um, we, are, we have hit 10 o'clock. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and call this meeting to order. Um, this is the Cultural Green Space Task Force meeting, and um, the date is March 29th, and time is 10 a.m., so we'll go ahead and call this meeting to order. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to start this off and let everyone know I worked in the public sector for a few years, never chaired a committee like this, never been on any boards, so I apologize if I stumble through the procedural process, um, but essentially, in so I was hoping Tony would be here so I could look at him and say, hey, Tony, Tony I need you to chime in. <laughs> but, um, Walker, you got enough experience. You're going to do great. All right, I appreciate it. But um, the first thing um, I wanted to do was, was kind of lay out the schedule. We are working on a very short fuse here. We need to have our suggestions slash recommendations to the board by April 18th. Is that correct? Yep. Um, Next week's meetings are, we were going to try and do consecutive meetings. I hope that works for everyone. We kind of don't have a choice. We've got to do a meeting this week, hopefully a meeting next week. It will have to be earlier in the week, or is that not going to work? I'll send out some proposed dates for next week, and then we will do one final cultural green space meeting, and then we will collaborate in a, a meeting with the city hall task force as well or we'll bring our ideas together and they will bring their ideas to the table. We'll probably argue and fight and there'll be some disagreements and then we'll have something to take to the board on April 18th. So that's that's really in a nutshell. I know it's we're on short strokes here. We don't have a lot of time, but that's why we wanted to, to get, this, um, get this task force going um, as quickly as possible. Um, because the other side of it is, is we need to get the, the consultants going, the, the design firm, to really finalize the ideas. They're waiting on us to tell them what, what we want, and then we'll go from there. Um, so the uh, so the procedures forward, I guess we, we touched on that. So I wanted to start talking about the cultural green space in and of itself. I know there's probably quite a few ideas that um, everyone here in attendance has. Um, I guess I will start it off with a, a few items that I know have come up in the past. First is the movement of the Kelly Slater statue from where it is at the median in front of Chevron to the green space area. Um, wanted to open the floor to discussion, I guess, first and foremost is people's feelings on moving it. Sounds like there's a lot of people in favor of it. Some people are not in favor of it. Um, the actual placement and location, that would be a, a TBD when the, the design firm comes up with some layouts because the devil's always in the details and this kind of stuff. When you're talking utilities, water, sewer, electric, stuff like that, where these types of things can go can typically be done in an after the fact fashion. So just wanted to open the floor to discussion on, on the Kelly Slater statue, thoughts, placement. Um, could you go over this and kind of orient us as to what this is the first time that I'm seeing. Yep. Um, Sorry, I should have I should have done that off the bat. So Tony, we are going to jump to let me see which one has the best. Um, let me let me get you to the oblique. Is this the one that has more than one? So there's Tony, one of the PDFs that I sent you has three sheets in it. rotate this so you guys can get a better picture. So now, bear with me for one second. Can you pull the thing? Can you do that? Yep, sorry. Are we looking at the site plan? So we are looking at the, there's that black and white oblique. That's the very last page. It'll be the third page in the, the three page PDF I sent you. So this in and of itself, so what we have here, um, and Tony, for your edification, top right corner, this is the proposed city hall location. Um, Left-ish side of it is the existing fire station. In between the fire station and the green space, which is this little 
this little square at the um, basically center bottom of the page. This would be the cultural green space here. There will be additional parking back here. Um, we have some of the parking is already in existence that you see between the fire station and the old city hall. So essentially the green space area that we were working with, I'm sure everyone's been by the demo site where they've demolished city hall mm -hmm. and it's all, it's all sodded now. Mm -hmm. that for lack of a better description, that is the green space we will be working with where they have put grass down where the old city hall is. So to give you an idea of the size of the area that we have to work with. So this, this type of photo is what we call an oblique. It's kind of at an angle to, to give you a point of reference. Um, so this is this is essentially the area that we're working in right here. This is our, our green space. You'll also see there's there's a little stage area for acts very similar to Riverfront Park. You know, they have say, yeah, very very similar setup to that. Um, not quite as elevated, but you know you can see there's a couple steps. And obviously this is very preliminary in nature. This is all subject to change to a certain extent. But um, so that is the, that is a green space area we're working. In a nutshell. Walker, yes, sir. Uh, just to be clear, that is stage, and I know it's all preliminary, it's just uh, proposed, but that is actually backed up to the new city hall building, correct? That's correct. That, that's right, Wayne, right? Yeah. 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 Yes, it is attached to the building. Which is kind of what we've been talking about for several years, by the way. So, okay. okay. And last thing, and why well, I say last thing, uh, Whenever you uh, started asking folks, I heard, I can hear somebody talking in the background, but I can just barely hear them, so you might want to turn your are talking, please. Okay. All right, right we'll do. Um, let me see if I can take this out of here. So, so basically, this is the area that we're working with. Um, what this shows here, this is kind of a fancy little, also, retro city hall sign with neon backlighting behind each of the letters um, I don't have that picture here but there's there's a conceptual layout of that but so I, I think some folks have suggested we move the Kelly Slater statue personally I think its current location is a bit of a safety issue because people be my only comment really about it right that people run across the street yeah and I know there is there is pedestrian crossing at 4th Street North People typically won't use it if they want to run straight across to the statue mm -hmm. in and of itself. And there's no parking there as well, so it's That's really right. difficult to, to get yeah. to. I guess they would get in that gas station is probably where they park. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Or they park in that mm -hmm. big empty lot next to the, the dentist's office there, mm -hmm. you know, kind of where yeah. the overflow for four street parks. Um, so I would be for moving it if there's a place that is appropriate for it. And okay. if, if, you know, the the money works out that way and just seem to do it. Gotcha. Okay. All right. And that was that was kind of what I, I figured. The, the it is such a nice, like, it looks nice where it is, but it's it would be a nice central piece to have, too, and right in our downtown. So right. I agree with the, like, I do Yeah. Know. It would yes. be nice if we could replace it with something else that wouldn't necessarily be as much of a draw for people to come in. But yeah. still nice. Yeah, but, I agree with that. But still a nice gateway to the city. Right. Tony, Tony, can you hear them a little better? I moved the, moved the phone a little bit closer. A, a, a little bit better. And if I could just chime in, uh, when, when the statue was first built and a lot of the discussion was to actually have it in downtown. Mm -hmm. And it seemed like at that time that we could figure out where to put it because uh, we didn't have a cultural green space at the time. And the, the other part is, and you know, that's one thing. The second part is, I think it's extremely dangerous where it's at because there's, it's not like you can just park easily and walk over to it. You have to cross a horribly busy street and most people don't cross it the light and figure it out to tourists. And the folks who, you know, we see it up every day, but the folks who come here and see it go, oh, that's Kelly Slater statue. We should have that downtown because it's an attraction. It adds to our downtown, so I, I really think it should be somewhere in downtown. Yep, I, I, I agree with that. I think collectively, we, the consensus is we agree with that as well. So, um, I know there's some folks that are like vehemently opposed to it, just leave it. But, um, and, and
and a caveat that I, I did not bring up at the beginning of this meeting, you know, the ultimate decision will fall to the commission. We're essentially providing suggestions, recommendations. They get, they have the final say, so they could mix everything we do just so everyone understands. Um, so that's that's kind of the way these processes work. So, but yeah, I agree with you wholeheartedly, Tony. Just, you know, putting cars here, and it just makes this so small. You know, having the cars next to the fire station. Right. I mean, you really have a tiny, tiny little place for the new cultural green space. I mean, which makes it hard to put Kelly Slater in there because then it'll just, you won't have any room to be able, it just seems like it's not good to have the cars there and that maybe those cars, you know, could be a, uh, at the city garage across the street because it's going to be very limited it's a tiny space and, right and for one thing put kelly slater in there um, which i think you should it's just going to be very tiny control green space so the the part that parking which you know is to the right of the um, fire station uh, is that for the fire workers or, or what is it for a particular? I believe by my understanding right now it's for the public and for the city employees to park when, for the city hall because the parking we won't have any parking really but there'll be parking underneath the building um, and there'll be spaces for handicap 15 minute for you know city hall parking and then staff will have parking there and on that back corner where the to this back yeah. corner. This back yeah. corner here will be a lot, right. but we will be sharing it with the fire department. So it's city employees and that. City employees can't aren't supposed to park in the private parking garage across the street due to the bonds on that parking garage. We're not allowed to take away spaces because that space, um, the parking garage pays for itself. Right. So it'll be taking up a whole level, cut the revenue down on paying back that bond. How many spaces do you need for uh, you know that one? 35 to 40. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that, that, that would also include... Do, do you have the first floor elevation with the... Uh, the plan view? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you can scroll up or down. That, that one, yeah. yeah I guess you can kind of see You can orient way. yourself to see the stage in the front. Mm -hmm. So there, that's parking underneath there. So this is parking. So Tony, we are back up. On that, in that same PDF where we have the oblique, the black and white oblique, we jumped up to the very first page, which is a plan view that is zoomed in on the actual, the, the city hall itself. So what you'll see is these yellow lines. These also include, this is parking here, I'm assuming. These lines are kind of difficult to see, but it looks like this is one way. There's parking along here, parking along here. So it looks like we have 11 spaces there, is that right? That's what it looks like, yeah. Okay. And some talk was that parking area that you're looking at and that you're discussing wasn't going to be concrete, more like a different type of, it kind of looks like grass, but it is parking as well, mm -hmm. but it'd be used for food trucks during like Friday Fest or another, or any other events. It'd be a multi-use area, so the park, that lot would be closed off, so parking or food trucks could get in. Okay. That, that was the original idea of it. So it would be an extension of the green space okay. without so the that trucks being on the tree, <laughs> yeah. on, on the green space, and without trying to close down in hand. Mm -hmm. That was the thought process. Yeah. And, okay. and like I said, it also So that would make it stuff. actually bigger. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, and that's the, the gray shaded area where the parking spaces are in this oblique, mm -hmm. um, that is, it would be either permeable pavers or have you ever seen the, the articulated block that is okay. like has grass growing in the middle of it so okay. because stormwater is a really hot commodity here yes and so we're always i'm sure you guys are dealing with it behind uh, yeah. your shop all the time <laughs> so <laughs> the more, yeah. 
I'm sure we're taking into account like water drainage, and I, I love the green space for that yep. as well. Yeah, you know, so that's that's a big thing there. Is that would also accommodate some stormwater storage? Yes, ma'am. So this parking, there is some existing there already in this this position, correct? And are you saying in the current layout of City Hall? Yeah, where the spot where she's talking about right now, there is parking for firefighters right there right now. It's just one row. Where this is yes. showing to yes. possible? Yes. Okay, so it's going to be revamped a little bit, mm -hmm. right? So, and then we will be able to park food trucks in there. That is the thought. That's the thought. Okay. Um, okay. How many food trucks? Wait, but that's no. the idea. Okay. Um, because you won't have the lot that you use now for Friday Fest. Okay. Because there will be a, field, a building right. there. Right, right. So you, and you can't put them underneath the building. So that's the idea. Right. Okay. So with the two rows for cars, how, you know, there are all the cars would be, they would come in and turn here. So how would they get, sure. is that, and how does that work? <laughs> so, you have to look at the other one, you're, sure. oh, you're talking about here, correct? Yes. Okay, Johnny, we're jumping back to the black and white oblique. We're talking about so in between the green space and the fire station there's looks like there's about 16 or 18 parking spots adjacent to the green space on the south side yep um so that this is the area we're talking about and dr smallwood brought up the question about how are, how are cars coming and going so um southbound a1a they would come in here it looks like this is still two-way based on what i can see in this yeah. little drawing here so you would come in southbound A1A and make a right turn. You can pull in the spots here. You can also back out. I don't, it's not clear to me. I think on, on this one, it shows the, the new vehicle access. Yeah. Is, but, I, but this also still has the potential for parking garage, which is the next, right? And at this point in time, it would be hard. So it would be here and then you would come in and around and we can close it off. So oh, okay. cars don't park in it. I got it. So there would essentially be a curb. Curb there going right all the way around. All the way around. And they would drive. I got because it. they have to go on, you have to be able to get underneath the park or underneath the city hall. Right. So that's the way it looks like it's okay. you're okay. kind of okay. coming in and you're going into the parking area and then you have to have a way out. Right. So are, we, are we keeping the right out? I'm kind of observing here. <laughs> He's the same problem. Just, just um, in general, this is highly conceptual. Yeah. So we're telling the architect, okay, we want to have a, an area for parking, food trucks, and you know we want to have a green space area, but the details of the site plan are yet to be determined. All that stuff is, this is just strictly, hey, we want to put food trucks here, and hey, we want to put you know, some art here and, and right. so on. That other drawing is actually in, um, laid over the topographic um, survey, which puts that all to scale in the actual, that if you can, can you zoom in on that? Yeah, so this is, it's hard to see. Um, all right, Johnny, we're going back to the, uh, the PDF that has the, the three files in it, the first page in that. That has the, the complete lay of the land, including the fire station, um, the new parking area, the new city hall, the, the cultural green space. So that was a little bit more developed than the, than the previous one. Right, so, so these lines that you see here is the topographic layout. So basically what this is showing, and I'm, I'm focusing in on the area where it says New parking, nine new parking spaces. Yes, that's the actual pond that's there. Yeah, there's that's a stormwater pond as it currently stands. If you go out behind the the fire station, there's those ponds back there. Okay. That would no longer exist. Okay. Um, so these these lines are kind of hard to see, but that gives you the current topographic layout. Another thing too. So just what's going on here? Oh, yeah, you know, yeah. you guys are on the, the ground level. Right. That room which is that room there is a community room right it has currently now it has um like garage doors like across the street at um tropics mm -hmm. you know those yes. they're, they're garage doors but they have glass in them right that has um probably four or five of them so you can open that room up and it'll bleed out into the, the green space area for oh, events right. or 
you know, you can have, uh, there'll be a, um, a warming kitchen in there. I think they call it, you know, not a stove, but microwaves, things right. like that. Um, so that is, you know, even though it's in the structure, it still affects the green space. Yes, yeah, it's still potential. Yeah, so you can have some really space. nice affairs yeah. there, you know, when we have Friday right. Fest, you can open it up. And that's things, nice. Just things like this is for your information. Yeah. yeah. Yep, and that's the the current conceptual plan is move the Freedom Seven Senior Center to yeah, right, but it's there. a community room. Yeah, right. we we anyone nice. you know you could rent it for weddings, you know, divorces. Yes, yes, sir, Tony. <laughs> Yes, that's Wayne. <laughs> I, I was told to keep my mouth shut here, and I, I'm not. No, no, I, I assumed it was you, Wayne. Uh, the second question is: uh, the the doors you're talking about are they actually facing east? Are they facing out into the green space? One is Tony in the front on the east um, elevation. Uh, I believe now, as it stands, there's three of them on the north elevation. And then I'd have to look at it again. Can you pick that up from that drawing? Or? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure okay. I can see that without zooming in. All right. Uh, and then my, my, my third question is. But, is but Tony, that's just preliminary design. So, we, you know, that's open. Right. right. And, I, and I understand that. And then my, my third question uh, is in looking at the print in the uh, between where the new city hall is and the existing parking over on the far west side uh, along Brevard Avenue where it says nine new parking spaces that's where the storm water is where does the storm water get you know uh, obviously we need storm water capture where is that going to be so that will that will come down the road. I don't want to speak for Wayne, but you know that the stormwater design, essentially the way that the design process will work, will say, this is what we want. They will start laying things out, laying laying things out, and once we say yes, we like that, they will have to work stormwater design into it. Honestly, I suspect that there is going to be a significant amount of exfiltration infrastructure that goes in okay. under the green space and potentially okay, even under good. city hall. Um, Cause you know, we're gonna, I think most everybody in the room is, you know, without saying it, it, it environmentalists, I think are, we're all environmentally aware and concerned about our lagoon. So whatever we do in the green space or parking or anywhere else, obviously that's a big concern. So thank you. Yeah, and, and something, you know, underground exfiltration infrastructure would complement what has already been done at, at, as yep. part of the Miniman project. For those of you that, I mean, some of you may or may not be aware, there are these pipes buried under Miniman Causeway where the stormwater goes into the rain gardens. You'll see those inlets there. It goes into these underground pipes and it percolates into the groundwater. So that's a much better practice to, to minimize the amount of fluid um, loading to the lagoon. So that's something like that would be very good. <coughs> Walker? Yes, sir. If, if I could, and, I, and, and again, I apologize for everybody probably jumping into some of the stuff way ahead, but I know when we start talking about this green space, I know we're going to be looking at um, you know, artificial turf versus real turf and all, all of that. And I just, and you brought up rain gardens, and it's, I think it's really important. And I'm not beating up on anybody, but we need to be aware of whatever we do is going to take maintenance. And we know how, you know, tough that is without, you know, getting ugly about it. And looking at the rain gardens now and how the maintenance sometimes has kept up and sometimes in the past hasn't through contractors and others. It's something that I think as we work on this plan, we need to be aware of how much maintenance i know when i was on this commission i remember some and this was what 15 years ago every palm tree was like was like a 35 or 40 dollar cost annually between maintenance trimming this pick it up stuff trimming it whatever so every tree every plant every green thing we do there's 
maintenance of property. Yep, absolutely. And I, I think that a, a, a broader statement there is anything that we put, we build, and expect to stay in good shape requires maintenance. And, and to your point, Tony, you know, I'm relatively new as a stormwater manager, but just for everyone's edification in the room, I don't want to go off on a tangent here, but for example, the, the existing rain gardens, we pay a landscaping company almost $40,000 a year just to pull weeds. Um, plus the stormwater crew, probably if I had to guess, we were anywhere from eight to 16 man hours a week out there and we still don't do a perfect job, not even close. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, you know, there there is a significant cost with that. And I think a lot of times for my position working for local government, people high five when they do a new project, but no one looks long-term in the operation and maintenance costs. And then things fall into disrepair. And then, you know, in, in the case of Main Street, it's important that that area looks tidy yeah. because we have regular events there. So, right. so yeah, anyway. and that's one of the volunteers with Keeper Park Beautiful on our, our uh, Keep, uh, Downtown Beautiful program. We're out there every two or three months and not just picking up litter, but also pulling weeds. So it's, you know, it's a concern. Yep. That Absolutely. was a question I was going to kind of ask, like, if we do more of a natural green space versus because we're concerned about the lagoons. And I think that all these things might absorb water like we want, but it definitely isn't going to be like just good old nature, if that makes sense to me. Um, and it might not even be an option to have actual grass or what financially like you're saying. But is there ways for us to make the are other than just what picking up like it's, I know it's already a struggle to get people to come and participate and stuff but is there a way to make the people that live here more aware of those things so that we can work that like to come up with a concept that could help people want to help keep it nice out there if that makes sense like, yes yeah, so we the community involvement um yeah so like Kel- I know that's always a stretch sometimes too but right so so Kelsey Mack who is our environmental specialist she works a lot of after hours events that include public outreach and trash bash, like we have trash bash this Saturday, Mm -hmm. we're gonna be doing the North Thousand Islands. Um, There is also signage that we typically, like for example, with um, Miniman, there is a sign which has become dilapidated at this point at the corner, I guess it would be the Southwest corner of Miniman and Brevard. It's a picture with some pelicans that are, have some quotation bubbles above them says, oh, hey, what happens to the stormwater? So there is an intent there. I will be blatantly honest. Um, I work when I worked for the Save Our Lagoon program. We invested staff for the Save Our Lagoon program invested a lot of time and money into understanding how to change people's habits. Mm -hmm. Public outreach only goes so far. Mm -hmm. People who care Care. will make a change when they learn something. What I've seen, the general rule of thumb is if it is not easy and people don't have a tangible, almost immediate reward from what they do, they won't do it. And it does cost them extra money. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they typically think. No, yeah, yeah, yeah that's, I that's, that. There's a lot of emphasis on public outreach and unfortunately based on research that we've seen and we've hired, we, we hired numerous organizations, including Marine Resource Council trying to go to do this research to figure out even lawn companies which are probably one of the biggest contributors to mm-hmm. grass clippings to the lagoon. They typically, unless there's there's some immediate benefit or a, a financial gain of some gain of some yeah. sort, most people will not change their habits, unfortunately. But that's that's kind of where you know the city comes in and, and volunteer groups like Keeper Park Beautiful yeah. and and um, the people who do trash bash come in and make a difference. Not to rain on anyone's parade. I no, mean, I'd rather hear the realistics. Yeah. I mean, I, people are people, so there's yep. a level of just realizing, especially if you live here, what people are like. Um, and sadly, I, I think a lot of it is the people that come in as guests in our town, but I also don't, I mean, there are people that live here that are also just as guilty as not um, Absolutely. taking care of the place that yep. they're quick to complain about, but maybe not yep. <laughs> contribute well, in a positive manner. I, I had heard a phrase recently, which I had never heard before, was the NIMBY. I don't know if you've ever heard that, mm-hmm. not in my backyard. Mm-hmm. Not my problem kind of concept. And, and I saw a lot of this at the Save Our Lagoon. People were up in arms when we had fish kills and algae blooms, but we would come in, like I managed the dredge projects, so I would say, hey, we're gonna do a $27 million dredge project. And they're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You mean like, 
what do I do with my boat? Like, I have to listen to this equipment. You know, it's the not in my backyard syndrome. Yeah. So it, it's it's a balancing act. And, That's just and human I'll, existence in yes, general. Yes, exactly. So sorry, we, we digress there, Johnny. So can I ask you, sure. this green space, so we have the, a little amphitheater here. Yep. We're going to do Friday Fest within the green space now is and not close the street is that the plan that's the goal that's the goal and then how often are we going to use this green space other than friday fest are we going to try to have weekly things or are we having no you know, bocce in there or um, I, I know i'm oh, sorry um, i know that there's been talks with the playhouse of possibly doing little things on the stage mm -hmm. at different times to try to get people to the playhouse that's down the road right um i know it's going to be able to be used for other little things um it had been brought up by somebody about possibly doing a little area for you know kids and nothing like a, not a playground but you know if you go to some places they might have a giant checkerboard set or something that's right. inlaid into the ground yes um, something to do with those things the green space will pretty much be an open an open air park okay um, is the goal to bring people downtown and really use the space, or is the goal to make this a really pretty space that we occasionally use? I'm going to say both. I, I would like yeah, to say both. I, I think it's probably okay, so both. So we want to yeah. bring people downtown and yeah. actually use Get this space. Get some lunch, space. you know, try to go across the street, sit down in the park, have lunch. Okay. And now, I've yeah. heard people express that too. Yeah, like, you know, different we have from the beach, come off the beach, come, the beach, the beach. come into the grass. So we want to try grass. to draw people yeah. here. Right. 142 okay. has taken the, the only green. They are the green yeah. space that we yeah. have. That's the only open air place right. that we have anywhere yeah. downtown right. right now. So. Okay. So hey, just Mark. the. Walker, well, right good. Yes, sir. I, and, and I apologize, I don't want to step on anybody. I jump in because I can't always hear everybody speaking, so I don't mean to step on anybody speaking. Um, a couple of things real quick. One is, you know, it, it just doesn't seem to me that that space is big enough to um, work for being the only space when we do Friday Fest. If we're reducing Friday Fest, that's one thing. But if you think about the last couple of Friday Fest, and I'm not saying we should or shouldn't do it, I just want to make sure we're all aware. If you look at the last few Friday Fest, there's no way that that's going to fit into that green space. So just, you know, that may be part of the discussion about, about Friday Fest. But getting off of that, that's one thing. The other part is, is I think I, at least my my feeling has always been that having a nice green space that looks good, feels good, yet isn't always got something going on. It's nice, like just to be able to go over there and sit and relax and have have lunch. You know, uh, you know, once in a while have some music in there. Maybe have an event from time to time. I think it's a useful space for that. It should be, but I, I, I can't imagine we want it to be a, something that's like, you know, just constantly stuff going on there. There's got to be some balance, right? Correct. And Tony, it has been discussed about this space may not be large enough to do the whole Friday Fest. Um, and if we have to, we'll close down one portion of Minuteman, but the goal is try not to close down all of Minuteman. Because what's happening is everyone's drinking, cops are, are, are thinned out, and now we have people who are drinking at one end, crossing A1A when it's already thick and potentially causing um, a safety issue. So we're trying to reduce that, that safety issue down to one side versus spreading it along with Minuteman. Yeah. So we do understand that we may have to close that portion, but the goal is to try to get as much as we can through that green space. Well, if I, just to jump in on that, and I get that, I absolutely get that, because I sat and talked to the cops, you know, those intersections and all the issues that go on with that. 
uh, and I agree, um, you know, and it just as suggested is, and I know we've got a green space and we want to utilize it, but maybe from time to time, close off one side or the other, and this is coming from a business person that, you know, the planning test didn't used to uh, work very well for some of the businesses all on Minutemen, but the last couple actually have for whatever reason. So you might want to look at maybe just closing off one half of Minutemen once in a while, maybe the beach end, not the beach end, but the uh, Atlantic or uh, Orlando section, and then maybe another time just do the Friday Fest in, in the park and or the Brevard uh, or Lingo section close off. Just a thought. Yeah, yeah and I, I think, Tony, what, you know, I know you've been, this is definitely not your first rodeo with, with city events and operations. Um, I think that this, you know, once the, the green space is implemented, I think it's going to be a trial and error situation where they try something, we go, okay, that would work, and that won't work, because anybody who went to the last Friday Fest, it was more people than I'd ever seen at, at Friday Fest before. Mm -hmm. Having that green space plus Minuteman closed would have been fantastic, because you could have had a, a way to get away from the crowd. The only place to get away from the crowd was to go stand by the generators that were running the food truck. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I, I, I'm not sure that avoiding closure of Minuteman would would actually even fix the problem and the green space would would be able to house that many people so so the question that i was just for clarification because you said you know you wanted to have friday fest in that green space so when you have 50 vendors and you've got a bank a, a band and then you've got the food trucks i don't see that fitting in there and that's why i said there's a possibility that we'll close because we already talked to kenny about this um right about this situation because the band is the ideal the whole point is the band to use the band shell yeah. so you won't have the big um right you know, stage the anymore right. um and yes you do have the vendors but we would have to play with it that's why it would be a trial and error okay that's why we may have to close one portion of minute man okay. down we're just trying to reduce safety is is going to be right. the, is a key thing and right absolutely. now absolutely like he said the last few friday fest has been 10 times more than normal. Correct. It was just becoming a safety hazard on the three or four cops that are right. roaming out there trying to do their job. So that's all it is. But right now, like he said, this is all conceptual. So by the time right. it actually comes down, it, it may, City Hall could shrink. Yeah. Right. We could have a bigger space. Yeah. City Hall could get bigger. And it depends on the commission on what they want to do. So we're still kind of, so our goal really is just to try to figure out suggestions that we can move forward to the commission, not try to, the right. design this whole space of suggestions because we have to get them to the 18th. So we have to figure out what suggestions we need for this location and what do you guys think is imperative that has to be in this location. You right. feel that's in this right. area. So what about electricity? That's something we area. have to discuss okay. about. That is where I would defer to the consultant. Because <laughs> they're, you know, if we tell them, hey, these are the needs, we may have some vendors set up like we do in uh, Friday Fest. That's where they come in and work their magic and figure out how to run utilities and also cloak them, so to speak, mm -hmm. so they're not this giant high store. With, like we have that right. one big right. rusty electrical box that's on the corner of Night of Man and, right. and right. Brevard. They're, they, that's why they get paid the big bucks, so to speak, is they right. come up with those types of ideas. Well, Kenny asked me to bring that issue up. Mm -hmm. so I don't. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know. Talking grass versus turf, which yes. I think is what we're supposed to be kind of talking about hey, today. Can I interject something? Yeah. So you'll you should be discussing, in my in my opinion, yes. hardscape and green space. Hardscape, what I mean by that is pavers okay. or, uh, or granite. Okay. You know what? Because you're gonna have to have a blend of that in there. Okay. And um, so it doesn't have to be all field. No, okay. not not by any means. Okay. Um, and there's been recommendations where we have no grass. Could you, could it's, you it's, pick up, please? Yeah, there's been recommendations where there's no grass. It's just <laughs> a, a plaza. You know, like you'd see in Washington D.C. Right. Something okay. like that. You know. So here's the way you have to kind of look at things and it's extremely difficult to do. 
And I'll make an analogy. When they built the city hall, which I just had knocked down, um, one of the questions that I would have asked them when they built that is, how much room are you gonna allocate in here for the IT department? And that build building was built in 1962. And the answer to that is none, because we don't even know what you're talking about. Right. So it's difficult to do, but you have to look at this as a monumentous part of downtown, right. i.e. it's gonna transcend generations. Yes. And that's very difficult to do. Yes. But you're creating a plaza area that's gonna go beyond Friday Fests. Who knows if they're even gonna have them in 20 years, right. 30 years, you know. Um, but that's something that, you know, is difficult. Now you're gonna put a piece of art in there that will transcend generations. And just like we did across the street, I mean, I was in a role with that, um, the piece of art that was put in there. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, that will be around for a long time. That's a statement, you know. So this no, to me should be a statement. Um, so, I mean, you're talking about Astro, you know, all the, but yet, yeah. you get where I'm coming from. Like, yeah. it, it's extremely difficult to, because think. nobody has a crystal ball. Right. But trying to, like, think of maybe our capital, you know, that, that type of mentality. Right. You, you know, don't, you, you understand what Got I'm it. I'm not as eloquent as Walker's statue. Let's go all these fancy schools. Sounds like sounds like you should be the chair of the yeah. cultural no, 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 show up because I have to go to another meeting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, of I'm, course, I heard I'd light that fire and get the hell out of here. <laughs> so she's got a question. I do. The Kelly Slater statue. Is there a place in or around City Hall that is good for that statue? that would be more protected than out in the open air green space where we're gonna have Friday Fest and potentially people climbing on it or, you know, we is there some place where we could protect it from the environment a little bit more and have it more around the city hall as opposed to in the green space? So that's- Or even somewhere else in downtown, I think that's a good idea. Exploring downtown. Right, or, yeah, I, that's, that's my yeah. concern is about the statue itself, and then we do want it to last for a long time. Right. Right. And we want to keep people off of it, and we want to try to protect it from our environment as much as we can. And that's a good idea. Oh. Try to put yeah. people are destructive. We're kind of limited in real estate. Yeah. Yeah. Especially downtown. Just a little bit. Yeah, and right. we're in a salt yeah. environment as well. Yep. So, yeah. um, you know, and I'm sure we wax it periodically, but. Yes. Oh, <laughs> I know. Well, you, I know we do that. I know we do that. Yeah. yeah. But but I have to honestly do. I have another meeting. Yeah, that's okay. But um. But yeah. I'm just wondering if there there isn't a spot for that that maybe isn't in a and place where we're having everybody come to party. And that's a discussion party. we can end up having. And I can put it down in the notes as a as a, as a, as a thought process for uh -huh. you guys when we do come together with the with the the city hall group, and then we can bring it forward to the commission, and that maybe be something where it might get put into the design process of moving it out. Because right now, I, as I'm looking at the plans, if this was, if we were going to say, this is what we're building today, I don't see a spot where it would go but because of the roll up doors. But yes. if we weren't having the roll up doors, I would say, oh, it's next to the stage, it's against the building wall. Right. We could put a barrier around it or a bigger. Yeah, we're gonna- Because like the statue we have in front of the parking garage, we have that barrier. I don't wanna call it a barrier, but a yeah, platform. Measure that statue. This is all this, that the last set of drawings I have requested. They're at a scale. We could scale that statue into that. And see where we could put it. Yeah. Yeah. Let's well, try to get it away from, from the playground and away just from. Put it on there and see what it looks like yeah. as far as to scale on there. Right. That would give you scale. kind of better. Yeah. I mean, it okay. would give me a better. I don't know how big that thing is. I mean, I'm there. not sure either. Tony, I, it's I, pretty big, but I know you've been patiently waiting guys, to speak. I, I'll come to the next meeting yeah. too, if you want. Yeah. What well, you got? Tony. You'll be there. I'll, yeah. I'll invite yeah. you. Good. <laughs> <I'm gonna speak. laughs> That's my boss right there. <laughs> good luck. Sounds good though. Really good committee and keep up the good work. <laughs> Some decisions at some point, especially, I think there's a time limit on 
uh, issue on the, uh, the, the terse issue. So two things, one on the statute, I, I agree, I think, uh, you know, and, and <laughs> I get it, we're not in Europe, but I'm thinking about European piazzas. A lot often they'll have a statue, it's elevated a bit, it typically has a, a little bit of a, not a, like a, an ugly fence, but a nice uh, fence around it of some sort, it's elevated, might even be a, in the middle of a pond, but there's ways to do that. Not necessarily <laughs> that, but around, uh, around that green space or, or in downtown. The other thing is, you know, we know we we're, we're talking about turf being artificial or real, and both have environmental issues. Maybe a, a, something to think about is a European piazza, plaza with, uh, you know, like papers that are uh, pervious, yet we can create a really beautiful design and maybe have some different walkways with plantings around it that, you know, don't block any, any stage, don't allow people to, you know, be on their mingle and sit down and relax. So there's green space, but there's also a, a lot of uh, pervious paper space. So we don't have to deal with you know, chemicals, fertilizer, plastic, you know, all, all the negatives because, you know, they have negatives. The fertilizer, it, you know, if you're gonna put green space, you're gonna use it as much as we're talking about. With real grass, it's gonna be practically impossible to keep and maintain. The alternative, any kind of an astroturf, leaches all kinds of chemicals and, and stuff in like it or not, plastic particles into the lagoon. It'll eventually find their way into the lagoon. There's no way to get around that. And into the, you know, however it does it, everything I've been reading, including the material you put out, uh, shows that. So just an idea of maybe having native plants and little gardens around, but have them maybe three quarters of the area with pervious papers. In a, in a really you know nice design yeah like two cents. yeah agreed um the the only thing that comes to mind is and i'm sure some snazzy um architect could come or landscape architect could come up with a way to where generally what for the green space and, and i'm no artist and i have never done any kind of layout for for visual aesthetics for this type of stuff but it's ensuring that the green space really gives a crowd the ability to focus mm -hmm. on the stage mm -hmm. because what what you don't want because you'll, you'll notice if you ever go to like a show somewhere there's there's certain they'll have things or infrastructure in the way and the crowd will typically avoid that area because it's it's a line of sight instruction or it's not a convenient place to sit to watch the performance that's going on on stage right. but i'm sure someone has has already gone through this and, and come up with some pretty useful ways because incorporating rain gardens and pervious papers i mean that's a win-win that's not a watering yes yeah you know, and it's just something that's hardy that's not gonna be a nuisance every year right right it's, it, it provides stormwater treat, treatment it's definitely Even like bench type seating like so yeah. say you keep the, what he's describing is exactly what I was thinking too, like something, it could be more on the outskirts or near um, like A1A itself, not directly blocking the stage, or right. maybe they're lower in certain areas, but a lot of people, especially if you're using it for Friday's uh, Fest space, they don't want to just stand around and stare at each other and you have to put a bunch of pop-up tables, which you probably still will do, but if there's some kind of bench seating. If we're using it for just people to enjoy too, if part of that area has some kind of bench seating that doesn't block the view, as well as um, just giving people a place to sit there too. And it's because you're gonna put chairs and stuff out anyways, that's a cost in itself. So if there's a way to build that into the build out without taking away from views and it not being too much, right. just a little, just enough. So people do wander through there and um, utilize that space that way too. It's big enough for that, especially if you're not trying to shove all the trucks and vendors all in one 
place. Yeah. Like an area to me, 142 is a great concept, but some of the things that I don't love about it, it's hot and there's nowhere to sit. And well, unless you're sitting up against his bar, and I'm sure he'll work around his kinks, he's got it set up to have people stand around for that. I think that you could do more. Oh, that's me. All right. Yeah, well, and Keep that's... You do more I, with that space and still utilize it in the same way, if that makes sense. And it'd be really aesthetically pleasing. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, natural plants that self-water. I've seen it in cities where you see the poles in the middle and they have the plants hanging down, and you're like, who waters that? No, they kick on. You know what I mean? And they're native to that area, and they're beautiful. And it lines the strip, like in Georgia and stuff. It's like, we could totally have those things that aren't just potted plants working just for the rain right. yeah, that I die. Yep. Yeah, and it would yep. be really nice to look at in front of our city hall as well. With benches. This is a random thing to throw out, but it's something that probably will get brought up and talked about, so maybe I'll just say it. Um, it. Another thing that will probably have to be decided before it's an issue is if they're gonna allow dogs and stuff walking around in there, people walk their dogs through Friday Fest. Um, I know it was a huge argument on the beach, but depending on what you guys put, as the outdoor space will depend on if you want if it's a lot of grass and stuff are you going to want dogs peeing on the plants and like some people are responsible dog owners some are i like my, walking my dog around town so i'm not saying don't but that will probably be yes something that yep. comes up as an and argument on either side and is the turf able to hold up with dogs because animal i'm just going to say animals because i've seen some weird animals walking mm -hmm. um animals on that turf yes and this is stuff that all has to be discussed and i know it will probably be something if, especially if you guys really make it into a space that doesn't really isn't really animal appropriate right. to use right. and they want to make it friendly neighborhood i mean you, you guys are all chosen for a reason mm -hmm. um yeah. you guys know you've all been here for a long time so you know the ins and outs of what the city wants and needs so how can we make it a, a community location plus friendly to visitors but yet beautiful in the same sense and with um with tony talking about the european plaza some other people told us that same thing so you're not the only one on that on that that page that you were suggested to look at um different parks in europe because of mm -hmm. how they're set up i'm on that page as well mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Put yep. there. Okay. well and, yeah yeah and kind of a segue well not a segue but building on this discussion one place that comes to mind where they've done something similar and i've never looked at it very closely is the city of cape canaveral city mm -hmm. hall they closed off i think it was taylor which used to run out to a1a and they built that kind of paver park they area just do something there this past I yeah, well, they just did something there that I saw, and I was like, oh, that's cool. I don't know if they're still doing Friday Fest. They have their own Friday Fest, yeah. and then they would do Movie yeah, in the Park. They're still doing Friday Fest. They're still doing Movie in the Park. Yeah, yeah there's so, something that I just saw, and I was like, oh, that's cool. Like, they're utilizing, they're, they're utilizing something I didn't even know they had. So okay. I can reach out to the city and get more information on what they've done. I'm not, I would think that it's pervious papers. I'll try to hire you said it's like behind City Hall. It's right in front of City Hall. Right in front of that one. Just yeah. to kind of walk we'll it and see. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, because that may, sounds like that's very similar to what we're talking about. Yeah. City Hall is very progressive in their way that they design and implementing, you know, green infrastructure. I would think that they, they likely use pervious papers and they have rain gardens as part of their stormwater treatment there. So, um, <clears throat> so we're not, uh, City Hall is not set yet. What? No. Yeah, it's not the final nope. design. <laughs> none of this is set Until yet. they're ready to put this out to bid, it was, none yeah. of this will be set. No, and, I mean, until the commission so, signed off and they stick a, a shovel in the ground. There's so not, what do they want to be at City Hall? I mean, there's this building here where most things are so correct me if i'm wrong but it will be the same all of the the transient workers for the city so to speak that <laughs> are, live, live here now the ones who moved in yeah they will really be the forward-facing group like our our finance group will be there the city manager's office will be there um who else am i missing uh so you'll HR have you'll have hr um you'll have city manager hr finance it will be moving down there um City Clerk's Office, I'm walking through everything. Um, building Department or Development Services will be there. So all the, the same people who were there at the old City Hall, mm -hmm. plus IT, because IT actually lives in this building. They'll be moving in. So 
you guys, you were here for the last hurricane. Uh, we lost all of our uh, networking infrastructure. Because and our generators. And our generators, because it's all one building. Yeah. So this building is gonna have all of that too in our build, new building. So it's, it's kind of trying to be hurricane resi resistant and all that good stuff. So it's gonna be a strong building. And that's why they're now proposing the original idea when this all started, it wasn't, we, we weren't gonna have that underground parking because it was supposed to be for one floor. Right. And because the West Coast kind of got, unfortunately, destroyed, has elevated our building up one and set out the wash through. Yeah. 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 The intent would have a wash through for the and, ground level. And yeah. the idea too is, um, I know Bank Street's gonna be bringing back the um, farmer's market. So the farmer's market will be in the underground of the parking there okay. instead of in the grass. So that way you still, we're not constantly putting something on the grass, so or turf or pavers, whatever, yeah. whatever your guys' suggestions are. Yeah. We're just kind of help yes, get, sir, get to a point. Could I just jump back into the uh, the park again? Uh, just as I'm looking at this and, and hearing, I couldn't hear all the discussion, and it sucks, but I, I got parts of it, and it, and, and I think. I agree with where what everybody talking, what what they're saying. Uh, one of the thoughts that came to mind as I'm looking, you know, and I and I understand it's just a, something to begin with, and I, a concept, and an idea. But I'm looking at the, the green space on the uh, the site plan that that's showing, and I think it's really important as we look at the the Minutemen and A1A boundary that we make sure that, uh, you know, thinking about um, the rain gardens, you know, and the problems we've had with, you know, trying to rope them off and keep people out of them and people wanting to cross the street and going through them. I think there, those gardens for both for visibility, for people walking around downtown to be able to easily see the green space, the whole green space, that they need to be islands, not just like long things of, with a few openings. I think they need to be islands with tall trees and low plants, especially in the perimeter. Just a thought, yeah. Yeah, agreed. Um, yeah, and that was, that's actually something I've been meaning to bring up. You know, another thing that it's a challenge when you're developing a new green space, but it's one thing that always gets me because we were in Florida and nine to 10 months out of the year, it's blistering hot shade trees in these areas. Yes. Yeah. And if, yes. You, yes. if you have a green space where you have a stage, obviously shade trees, you don't want them in the middle because then they're blocking everyone's view, but at least perimeter shade trees like live oaks or laurel oaks, um, because I mean, you just, in the dead of summer, you're you're outside you're constantly looking for that was place. my reference to the bar that i'm like they have nothing yep. and in the summer like to make me crazy isn't going through the summer and i couldn't i even told my husband I'm like how it's so hot there's yep. no shade yep like it's going to be miserable yeah well I'm, I'm, like I, i'm not sitting out there that, that's another <laughs> one go ahead tony if i if i could just to throw in and be prepared because we went through this years ago people oh it's going to destroy the sidewalks the leaves are going to clog this up mm -hmm. other cities do it including these cities you know it ain't rocket science i think we can figure out a way to put nice shade trees up native or otherwise that aren't problematic and that can be uh, maintained without harming the lagoon or the sewer system or the uh, storm water or the sidewalks or anything else and as, and as a quick reminder, they didn't take the oak down with the building. So the oak is in that. It's still in that it's lot. Still that, it's still in that lot. And I, I, my, my understanding, which could be nothing, um, they, I think they're planning on keeping it there, like building the building with that oak stain. Nice. Yeah. So, so you, I don't know if oak, that, what that's worth. But. Tony, so you know the, the big oak that was right outside of the commission chambers? Yes. That's the one we're talking about, is the one that's still there. Um, they had to trim part of it to demo the building, but the intent at this point is to keep that oak yeah. in place. Nice. Um, yeah. It'll help the building in general. Yeah. Building it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. It's a nice oak. 
Yeah. Well, and, and the other thing that, that a lot of people don't understand is is mature um, mature trees like that. They have a significant benefit in terms of stormwater mm -hmm. because they draw they so much lot. nutrients and water from the soil. Right. So yep. they, you know, the, the saying is is trees are the only um, they call them BMPs, best management practices in stormwater that, that get better with age. Everything else degrades with age. So trees actually, they grow, they mature, they take up more nutrients, take up more water, which frees up more storage space and, and reduces loading to the groundwater, so. I'm all on that. Right. <laughs> I don't think every tree has to be a palm tree. <laughs> yeah, so, and there's no shade. Yeah. There's no yeah. shade benefit yeah. with palm so trees, unless you stand that. right under it and eat that. Yep. So yeah, there you go. So yeah, real quick, since I, I, I had come up with, so I took a very objective approach when I was looking at artificial turf. I said, okay, what are the pros and cons? I had basically zero experience other than seeing it occasionally. So I tried to take an objective approach on what are the benefits, what are the drawbacks. After I went through the exercise of you know doing Google research and talking to a couple of people over at the University of Florida Agricultural Extension Center. It's called IFAS. Um, it was pretty clear to me that the cons likely heavily outweighed um, the pros, one of which, which you touched on, artificial turf is significantly hotter than natural ground cover. Vegetation, like living vegetation, does not reflect as much heat. Plastic, yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's exactly right. Um, so I'll just, I'll run through the list that I came just, or that I came up with just so we can, um, so everyone in here knows the pros to artificial turf typically has a low annual maintenance cost until replacement is needed some of the vendors that i saw have a warranty out to eight years i don't know if it'll last it's not that long no. and i don't know if that is applicable to florida the one thing that i think a lot of people miss is the uv rays in florida are way stronger than yeah. pretty much anywhere else in the united states except for possibly texas um, low irrigation requirements, you don't need to water it much. It's drought resistant, it's weed resistant, pest free. Um, it does eliminate the emissions from mowers, weed eaters, blowers, things like that when you have to do maintenance. Um, it also eliminates the need for pesticides and fertilizer. It also eliminates the potential for black grass clippings to enter the lagoon. Um, so that was pretty much it on the pros, but I think based on what I've seen, the cons outweigh it. The require, it requires replacement anywhere from every seven to 15 years. So that's, you know, when you have 20,000 square feet and it's, I think it's $200 per square foot for, that's just for installation. Wow. That doesn't, that doesn't also include the demolition, which means you have to rip it up, yeah. you have to redo the base, and then you have to reinstall it. Um, new research is showing that there's a lot of harm, harmful chemicals in the, the artificial turf, like PFAS, everyone's not surprised. So you're playing on it too. Yes. Yeah. Well, and apparently there was something you said about baseball players that were one of the Cincinnati Reds fields is artificial turf or something like that. Um, There's some players that all a group of players had come down with this some kind of rare form of cancer. Hmm. Yeah. So That's surprising these days. There's definitely heavy metals, volatile organic compounds. Um, these are the types of things. Um, they use infill, which I don't know if you've ever watched like a, a, a game, like a soccer game or a football game, where they drag their feet on the turf and there's this black dust that pops up. Well, right. A lot of times that's tire crumbs. That's right. basically old tires that they've shredded, and there's a lot of there's a lot of petroleum in that stuff. Um, Heat-related illnesses are a big thing. Mm -hmm. Apparently, that's common in hot areas that have artificial turf. You cannot recycle the material. It takes a very specialized facility to do that. There's none of which in the US that I could locate. There's some in Europe, but none here. So it's basically the old turf has to be taken to a landfill. Um, the list goes on and on. So you know, you got pet waste you gotta deal with. It's difficult to clean. You can't just wash it through. One of the big things um, from a stormwater perspective is the preparation of the base for that is very similar to how you would prep a base for pavers. You come in, you pack it down as hard as you can, then you roll the turf over it. That's not permeable. That's essentially no. an impervious, impervious surface, which 
that's just going to generate a bunch of stormwater runoff. If this stuff has heavy metals, PFAS, VOCs, that's going to end up in our stormwater system. So there's a lot of different things. The, the cons definitely outweigh the pros, in my opinion. Um, I don't know if we need to discuss that anymore. If anybody has any additional before you even said it, I was already kind of like yeah. So I so we're on the same page, right? Walker. Yes, sir. yes, sir. Could we? Uh, and, and I just want to say, I, you know, having worked with KGB for so long and dealing with plastic and knowing, you know, our, our lagoon, it has more plastic in it than any other national estuary in the United States. And that's the tiniest little micro particles. And what we're talking about, you know, if you think about it, you have to replace that, that artificial turf that often. That means it's breaking down. It's, and, and it's going somewhere. And it's not just staying there. It's going into the water, the ocean, the lagoon. I guess what I'm asking is, unless somebody has an objection, could we go ahead and agree now that we're that we are unanimous on uh, being opposed to putting artificial turf in there, and yeah. just then move on to a, a more creative kind of things that we need mm -hmm. to talk about. Yep, everyone is everyone is nodding their head in agreement, Tony. So I think we're all on the same page on that one. I think that's good. just go ahead and nix that one from the list. Um, could I go ahead? Yes, and could, in, in that, could I just for the minutes for the commission as they vote on it and discuss it, could we all agree that we are strongly opposed to artificial turf and it was unanimously? agreed that we're strongly opposed to it, that would be like a motion almost, if everybody agrees. I'm, I got I'm, it, Tony. I'm good with that, Tony. I think everybody in here is on the same page. Thank you all. Yep. Okay, so <laughs> Kirk is out. Hearing all that about Tony, that, that just, it just sounds disgusting. <laughs> yes. So, thank you. Yeah, well, and, I, and it's funny you say that because I said I don't want to come in saying, oh, well, this is all horrible, all the horrible things about it, but as I objectively laid it out, there's the, the cons strongly outweigh the pros, in my opinion. So, yeah. Can I ask you another question? I'm sorry. No, you're fine. Um, it's do we fine. have a landscape architect that's working with this project? Not at this time. Is there money in the budget to hire a landscape architect? We could. Um, the, the CRA is paying for the green space. The CRA is going to okay. have um, 1.6 million for the spring space okay. area. Okay. They just went for city hall hardening, which would help with the green space, which would help with the under portion of the city hall. Right. Because that's considered hardening, protecting from future storms that could come. Right. Um, if the state approves that appropriation, I believe that's a 1.5, which gets us back the 1.6 for the front. If not, then we use the 1.6 for all of that. Okay. Um, so how much so would it cost to hire a landscape architect where we could all say, these are the things that we would like to have in the park, and these are the materials that yeah. we are leaning towards using? We would have to put it out for bid. So okay. Let me double check with Wayne, because I feel like W and J and Jacobs, so they're, they're the two firms that are doing this. Correct? Jake, it, our our contract is with W J. W J's contract is with Jacobs. I suspect they might have a landscape. I architect. would be shocked if they didn't have a landscape architect involved in this right. because I would be too with the, the stormwater issues. Yeah, and the all external that. facade. You know, the external just the view of the the city hall is so important, and landscape architect. Is an integral part of that. Let me talk to Wayne okay. about that and figure out what. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'd be surprised if they said, no, we don't have a landscape yeah. architect working on this. Because if we don't, we would have to go out to bid for it. Yeah. The downfall. It would be beneficial if we could, like, we could brainstorm about what the uses would be for this space, is potentially what we would like to see in this space and the materials more or less that we would like to use and then let an expert envision the layout of how it would work and help us what's realistic what's not yeah what right. you know right. give, give them a wish list and see what can be accomplished tony you had something 
Yeah, I, I, I absolutely agree. I, I think, you know, while, you know, we all have artistic and all, all those other, you know, things, I think a professional is really important. And, and, and y'all are articulating it so well, you know, the, the materials, the concept, I mean, we can share some of those, you know, the visibility, the shade, uh, you know, working with the stage, working for, as well as for benches and all of that. And I think we give that to a pro, and they come up with a couple of design plans that then either we and or the commission can look at and make a final decision. And I think that's a, a just absolutely the only way to go about it. Yeah, and the professional would also know what the cost of the different materials are. Right. So we, you know, could do a wish list and a wish list of materials and and of uses, and then yeah. a professional would know how much we could have within the budget that mm -hmm. we have. And maximize the well, space. And, and maximize the space and the sight lines and mm -hmm. you know making sure and everything the, is down. The cost of the maintenance as well. Yes, that's so another point. Right. Because I think that some of the things that we talked about will cut down on me. For example, I mean, the pervious papers, obviously there's going to be some maintenance, but not as much as putting grass in, for example. So mm -hmm. I think the there, there, there may be more upfront mm -hmm. cost, but less long term. But like the European that got the grass that the stepping stones and the grass. Well, that like gravel. Gravel. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. The native plant side that he brought up would be nice too. You know, we're pushing the lagoon environmental education for general public. You were saying we have signs and stuff like that. Um, this space could also, if we put appropriate native plants that aren't going to like just die out easily, and if it's like self caring for the most part, which if it's native, it really should be. Right. Um, you're going to promote butterflies, you're going to promote more environmental things, and there's room for education there. Even little signs that say like what it is and why, and like. There's a way to make that where we educate the general public about what should be here. You know, people visit Florida. It's, like you said, it's not all palm trees. Mm -hmm. um, there's a whole wetlands and other things that are about us. And if we, if we push a lot about the sea turtles and the lagoon and all of that is extremely important. But even if we can't necessarily do a bunch of grass, we're obviously don't want it. We don't want to encourage this. Um, if there's a way to in, like get the native plant kind of back or flowers. I mean, there's stuff that grows year round. Yep. Um, that you put in your yards, and there's people that know even more than I do about native planting um, in Florida. But so I know there's people that could you use a resource what? for that. We could we could incorporate uh, you know a Keeper Bar Beautiful Lagoon Friendly Lawn Program, Isis Sally Scalera with Florida Friendly. Get them involved, and they would work with us and come up with good plants and yes, you know, I agree with all of that. Put them in all of that. So there are folks out there in the community, and what a cool thing for the city to be able to, you know, Look I good, see yeah. the article in the Florida Today about the city of Cocoa Beach, you know, the good friendly park, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. that's cool. Yeah. As long as it's pretty, as long, you know, a lot of the native yeah. stuff yeah. looks like scrub, and we don't yeah. want scrub. Oh, there's down. Yeah, yeah, I agree. There's <laughs> definitely <laughs> some things. Right. It's funny you say that because we've had issues with the landscaper who takes care of the rain gardens, mm -hmm. taking their weed eaters and weeding out the native flowers. Flower. They don't realize that it's yeah. native yeah. ground cover. Anything well maintained and well put together. Like there are people that do native yards and it looks wild and people hate it because it's too much. Yes. But there are people that maintain the native yard in a more, per like I don't have, I have more than just native in my yard, but I have like, like laid out islands of areas that are specific where I still have grass. Like I still aesthetically like to, have my house not look unmanaged right so there's definitely ways to do it yeah. where it doesn't look wild right yeah we want it to be pretty first and foremost yeah pretty and it's got to serve the functionality of yes, yes. potentially accommodating friday fest vendors as well as any oh. events where there's something on that stage so yes. those are i agree with that too yep. a balance of all of it yep am i allowed to talk during this or should i wait till the end Oh. It's fine. Yeah, but it's, 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 it's very informal. Yeah, very, yeah. I, I, I didn't know. If no, no, you're fine. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, we have to have the agenda just because it's open. So, so with the the deadline of suggestions needing to be April 18th, mm -hmm. and you're going to look into getting a landscape architect, does that have to be done by the 18th or? Technically, I think. So, so yeah. So what? 
So the way that I see this playing out because we are on such a short fuse here is I think we are going to have to provide them with recommendations of pervious pavers, native vegetation, potentially some educational signage, which that stuff will roll in. This is uh, I know that's all kind of like later talk. Well, it is, is and, and a big part of it, for example, when we pursue grant funding for this type of stuff, because if we do pervious pavers and rain gardens, we can pursue numerous different grants for stormwater treatment. Yeah. A lot of those grants, you won't get the grant money unless you do an educational outreach component. Mm, that was nice. signage. Yeah. So that's cool. when we're getting ready to build the project. So, you know, a year or two down the road. But I, I envision this as being a, this is something that, that, you know, our recommendation suggestion is rain gardens, pervious pavers, with the, the caveat of, you know, we may potentially use this for Friday Fest. There's a stage there, so line of sight is a big some deal. Shade. We want some shade trees. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I also liked your idea a lot with the live post and the hanging wet basket oh, sitters. Oh, there we go. Because yeah. I do the yeah. holiday, I, I ordered the holiday versions. So the holiday is on the front page. Front page. Yeah. 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 And that's and not a lot of maintenance so for those. This is. It's and not and lights will just kick on. Yeah. So the Holiday Light Company actually sent me a spring catalog, mm -hmm. which is interesting. Very cool. Mm -hmm. um, but it doesn't have to be this design. It's just this is what was in the app. Oh, but this is, a multi, this is a multi-useful oh. thing. So A, we have art. I'm sorry, Tony, you can't see it, but I'll scan it and email oh, it to you. It's, it's really pretty, Tony. Um, scan, so A, we have art. We have yeah, light in the middle. The benches see. also have electrical in the bottom of the, the benches. Yes. So you can yeah. You know, the teenagers who don't have their phone plugged in, then there's mm -hmm. benches. So mm -hmm. A, you could probably scatter a couple of those around. It won't interact with the, the stage. Um, it's thin enough because it's see-through. Gives people places to sit that can't stand out there either. Exactly. Yeah. And it's not super tall that someone's going to jump off and hurt themselves. So can or, I yeah. take a picture? You sure can. Yeah. I can even scan it. It's email to you. Actually, it does. But, okay. Yes, can, it's um, an affordable. I mean, I'm not sure the cost. Because there's chairs out there the all the time. Yeah. 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 I got that the mail. Yeah. Like, yeah. People are going to bring their own chairs. Right? Tony, so this pamphlet that we're passing around, we'll make sure we get a digital, we'll scan it and send it over to you. Well, that way you can see what everyone's the, talking about. The landscape around the edge there, the two edges. <laughs> Sorry, so you're going to have people walking <laughs> through that. Yes, so whatever you build, you want to make sure it's not trampled. So if you're going to do low lying plants between that, there would be trampled. You would almost have to build something that, like, yeah. Not island, but higher up. Not higher, higher, but like enough that people aren't stepping into it or leaving yeah, gaps for them to walk between if that's what you want. Yep. And the dogs will come whether you say they can or not. And I'm not saying no to it, but if we were going to do this or, you know what I mean, like yeah. the rubber, I'm like, oh, that would be so gross. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, papers are cleanable. You know what I mean? I just wanted to show you this. So you were talking about the statues. So Kenny's yeah. in Boston right now. Yeah. yeah. That oh, hold on one second, Tony. Right they're, they're chatting amongst themselves. So. Right. <laughs> yeah. And people stand in line to get their picture yes. taken yeah. at these things. Yeah. So that Kelly Slater statue yeah. is substantial enough yeah. that, I mean, this one is too. They're not, they're not trampling that down. Do so do you really need a guard around it? No, um, I don't think so. I guess we're, not you're just, we're just going to have to, so we have a draft oh, outside of our shop. Yeah. Um, at our old shop, nobody ever climbed on it. It just sat standing on its own. When we moved on to A1A, people were climbing on it. It's not heavy like that. It's top of the yeah, and people were going to get hurt. So my husband had to build a permanent box. We have to leave it out in hurricanes now because it's concrete and attached to the bench because yeah, people are climbing. Yeah. And they still, I don't even love it now, they stand on the box and they're breaking the shells that are on the bottom of the, so people are just yeah. rough around yeah, so they love they it. Are. They don't even tag our shop, like no one knows it's a tattoo shop, they're just taking a picture with a giraffe. You know, like, we have all these Instagrammers so, now so that yeah. want to get that shot, so I'm not sure. Tony, a different time today. Tony yeah. wanted to just, jump in. Go ahead, Tony. Yeah, I, I, great ideas. And just a con just an idea, um, you, know, in, you know, thinking again about those kind of some of those European plazas and you know, there's places in the states that have done it. We kind of sort of did it down at the end of Minute mm -hmm. where basically a raised garden, not necessarily in any particular shape, kind of oblong, curvy, with with either edges 
built in or, or alongside, but preferably cement bed, benches built in. And what it does is it keeps people from climbing up in there. You've got benches and it breaks the space up and you put a few, many of them around the perimeter so you still have visibility, but you've also now got a, a place to sit, you got a place to put some of your plants and trees and, and you could have your Kelly Slater statue matching that same elevation. Uh, so typically people won't necessarily be going up there try to climb up on the statue mm -hmm. as easily anyway. Mm -hmm. My five-year-old will figure out a way to get up there. <laughs> <laughs> and that I'm sure of. <laughs> of course. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we uh, statued astronaut statue mm -hmm. with Rockler's Design Studios. Mm -hmm. So they the, the, could make the, the... Is that the parking garage statue? That you yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. They can make that. But Rockler's right. you know, Rock Design Studios does all kinds of things mm -hmm. like you just showed mm -hmm. there. And, and we had, I mean, kind of wanted to do multiple statues through yes. um, our town. When I was on our main street board, um, one of the things I was throwing out is doing a sculpture walk that you mm -hmm. could do through town con containing the Kelly Slater statue and then your statue. And then we had plans for other statues up in the parks and everything so you could do a bike or a walk and do a sculpture tour mm -hmm. in Cocoa Beach which would go along with what we're doing here. We would probably have had uh, two more statues except for the pandemic. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I do remember that. I remember that was the first one. We have a really good one yeah. for Dog Park. Yeah, we do. And, 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 and you know, then we so, always talk about it, about future statues of maybe yeah. being a but statue with bodies, here. like he's talking, like we automatically, I'm not saying we have to do this, I'm just showing you, but yeah. make a statue out of this, but it's, it's useful in, in a lot of different ways. It's got the electrical, it's got the seating, it's got the safety of it, mm -hmm. but it all looks different, and it's all, you know, whatever the, the theme of what Coco Beach is. You yes. know, the astronaut across the street, we'll have Kelly Surfer, he's our surfer, and then, you know, uh, the mayor sent me, somebody wanted to, us to talk about a gold oh, bronze statue yes. of a lady. Yes. You know, and I'm thinking what lady would be due for Cocoa Beach and the only one I can think of is I Dream of Jimmy. Yeah. Yep. So exactly. not that we have to do any of that. He said that to me and I just never had a chance to look into it. I can if you if you guys suggest that I go <clears throat> forward and look and see what that what would look like in its tail. It was a bronze statue. It was a, somebody who's talking about yeah, empowering women yeah. in, in, a, in our town. Kenny suggested that. She wanted me to tell you that. Okay. So uh, uh, a dream of genie statue. I mean, it, but it's up to you guys. I'm just here to. Don't let her fool you. She's a POI. She's, okay. she's the reason she's propped this whole thing up. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, I, they're yeah. like, oh, you're the chair. And I'm like, Karen, what do I do here? <laughs> but that's an option. I can look into it. So like, <clears throat> seeing what they're actually designed and looked for, I, never want, I didn't go to their website or anything, so I'm not sure. Is bronze the right thing? Probably not, because it doesn't match and feed into the bill. It's all kind of. Are we going for a mid-century modern um, feel of this park? Is it, are we trying to do a mid-century modern downtown? I'm looking at the buildings that the city is building, and so is that. So we have a lot of let me, the hold on. Theme? Let me let me pull something up. Because the, what you're showing us with those light sculptures goes with that mm -hmm. concept and if we want to stay you know within a concept and we should try to keep it something like 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 Wayne said we're not looking for this year next year what is it going to be after we're all gone like what right. what is this is our legacy what's yeah mm -hmm. um I just thought this was okay good, so this is these are the renderings that we have seen so far again this is very conceptual level okay I'll be perfectly honest I have no idea what you were talking about when you said that Modern. <laughs> <laughs> modern. I'm an engineer, like I don't, I, I have very little artistic. Yeah. And it's very clean line. It's very clean. So, it is, so if you go to our website, I, we do have this, I don't know if you were able to see, there's actually a video on our website that has a walkthrough of the city hall of what okay. it's supposed to look oh, like. Okay. Um, if you go to the city services project right. city hall, you'll see it. But yes. this is kind of the look of it. Um, okay. That's the corner that he was talking about earlier. Okay. You know, 
It doesn't have to be that, because that's the walk down to the green space. Right, okay. That's the nighttime view. That's yes. that stage, so we could do the movies in the park. Oh, yes. Hang on one second. Hey, Tony, real quick, I will send you these, these rendering <laughs> photos that we're looking at right now, because we... Okay. Um, and tell Tony, I emailed you the, um, the light seating that I, we were looking at before. I, saw I emailed you a photo. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Welcome to our okay. 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 Yes, yeah. There's a room somewhere. Yeah. 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 I saw him right across the board. Is he alive? Is he alive? Um, he's kind of alive. Oh, come on. Yeah. He's just, nice. he's struggling. Sorry about that. He's a little, <laughs> he's a little Cocoa Beach Public Works building. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why you guys want to be building. <laughs> it is very clean lines. Um, like we said, like Wayne said, it's not set in stone, but it is very clean. That top right corner over here, this section here, that's actually a balcony with the commission room. Right. And this is the that's the roll up doors that he was talking right. about with the community room. So there's a little section here. If that doesn't, and that's an alcove, we could possibly put slaters there. And what's in the center there? This is the stage. Okay, that's so that's just at night. We're looking at the back. Yeah. Oh, so, so this is that we're looking at. Yeah. Way. Okay. Yeah. We're looking yeah. at the green space in the back of the stage there. Yes. So yeah. So this is basically standing we're, on anyone looking west. Yes. Yeah. And then it comes over here. Okay. Where is the main entrance to the city hall? Right over there, and that's. Oh, by the beach right there. So okay. you'll walk through because it's the underground. So you'll walk in and that where his um, his arrow is. Yeah. That's actually there's a door there that walks in and there's a staircase that goes up or an elevator that goes up. Okay. In that location. So okay. And then you'll walk in and this whole I wish I had a pointer. Sorry. Sorry to use that. Oh. <laughs> this whole section here is right. designed to be the lobby. Right. All the city staff will be blocked behind there. Okay. Um, this is the commission room. So anytime a commission meeting, you'll go upstairs and come straight across to the, there. Or use the elevator if you need ADA. ADA. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then this is the community center with the, with the background. Okay. So we should probably try to design our green space with that concept in mind and mm -hmm. go more of this a looks, This looks very fancy. Yeah, so click, go back up to the photo, just click on the photo, if there's an arrow on the right. I'm just going to here, because I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, look at that. Uh, okay. That's an easier look of it, because it's not during the day. Mm -hmm. during the day. Um, and this a lot of look, palm trees. Yep. <laughs> a lot of palm trees. Not and they didn't leave the oak, like they kind of left the oak. <laughs> yeah. They kind of left the oak in there on the, on the rendering. And then in the, in the background, that's water. what the river would look like if Minutemans exists. Yeah. 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 Um. But yeah, there's a few other photos. These are these that's are from inside the these are interior. It's going to be white. Yeah, all white. I think so. Yeah. At this point in time, it could change. It could have them act. They could decide. The commission could decide to go with the same look as the like the gray. police department. Like we're trying to get everything to try to right. Have a municipal plaza works. And this is in this photo. This is Minivan off to the left. This is looking out to the east towards. Um, As if no other business exists. Could you take <laughs> us back to that first slide again? Oh, you mean uh, the where we're looking at the at the state there. Right. This one. Yeah. Okay. So what we're talking about in here is really all that green wouldn't be green. That's that's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's exactly right. Which I'm fine with. Which, and, and I think, I'll, I'll go down, one of my to-dos will be, I'll go down and take some a lot of photos around the city of Cape Canaveral, their city hall, so you can kind of see that layout. I don't, I think I'm, I'm fairly confident that well, low profile, yeah, low profile, you know, rain gardens, flower beds, so to speak, mm -hmm. they will not impede the, the visual line of sight, even from the edge of the property out to the stage. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. Yes, I think it, it can very easily be done. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think the big okay. issue is how to keep people out of bed. Yes. No, no, go ahead. Oh, I'm okay. just thinking to myself. I'm just yeah. thinking multi-use. I'm thinking multi you don't have them at step level. You right. have, if you're going to do some kind of a real papers, you have a little bit of a, like an island type thing. Yeah. Honestly. And I'm, 
I'll, I'll be perfectly honest. I've stepped over the rope in the bollards in the rain gardens many times. Yeah, like time. if that was up high, I know they have to have it first. I don't know how the drainage works, but because it's all walking level, right. people don't even understand what that is. They're right. just walking right through it because yeah. it's, they probably don't even know why there's a rope. Like right. an right. average person is just yeah. like, what is this? This is just a grass area. Why do they yeah. rope it off? But if there's a little bit of a pave to it, people will at least, it doesn't mean they won't climb in it, but they'll at least be like, oh, this is like a, and if it's maintained at night, they're gonna be like, oh, this is like someone's like garden box type thing. I'm not gonna step. Yeah, and, and can I just add, if, if, if you elevate it a couple of feet, put like a little wall around, mm -hmm. you put your plants in there, you've got low, you know, ground level plants and then higher trees, eye level, you can still see in, you can yeah. see across the street. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Absolutely. And uh, again, a landscape architect would be able to help us figure out what that design should be that keeps people mm -hmm. exactly. out of it. Yep. If they, this is not, hopefully it's not their first rodeo. Yeah. You know, they dealt with this a lot in the past, so. Okay. Um, we've covered quite a bit of mm -hmm. information. Are there any other items that you guys can come up with? I think we've touched on everything that I had on my list. Did so, you? So just a recap. We're all, we all are on the same page to move Kelly Slater for safety issues. However, where to put said Kelly statues where we need to kind of figure that mm -hmm. portion out. Um, pre, pre, uh, pervious pavers throughout no turf. Mm -hmm. um, kind of looking more at the European plaza style look. Um, tall trees, low plants, um, native plants with educational background. Those are just some of the suggestions at this point in time that we're at that we are on the same page or someone on the same page. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I just want to make sure I had it all. Wow, that's good. I think <laughs> we may want to at some point, maybe not today or whatever day, we need to brainstorm what we think uses could be for right. that space and what we would like those how how what usages we want to incorporate mm -hmm. into the space. Right. Okay. Yeah. 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 And, and whether they can move Friday Fest or not to this particular location, this is going to be a focal point of the crowd at Friday Fest, regardless of if used, anything yeah. with Friday Fest mm -hmm. is going on in the park. People are going to get. I certainly would have last Friday Fest because it was so crowded. I would have immediately gone to an open area to hang out with the kids. Yeah, you'll be able, and you'll be able so to see So many people. I kind of think the Friday Fest has kind of sailed already, though with the area, is it 142, is that what they mm -hmm. call it? Because he's gonna throw something every time we have a Friday fest. Yep, absolutely. And it's gonna yeah. be, we, yep. I mean, I think we got it. Yeah, it it's, is, it has definitely gotten markedly larger. And I don't know if everybody in here saw, you may have seen it, you may have seen yeah. it, the, the article this morning in Florida today about, about the most spring yeah, break. It made it to MSN. Yeah. My husband just said it, it to me. Really, basically, yeah. yes. I think they said, 24% increase yes. in mm -hmm. record setting co space post Absolutely. spring break has coastal beach area buzzing. Yeah. Is yeah. MSN. Yeah. 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 So, so, and I'm afraid that ship has sailed right. as far as trying to try to keep it in keep one. crowds all on one side yeah. of Miniman and yep. not on the not crossing back and forth. I think it's, you know, it's well, happening. I mean, to, yeah, yeah, you know, when you just look at you know the You've got Area 142, you've got, what are the tropics? tropics. And now you've got Category 5. Yeah. You've got a, a lot of new bars opening yeah. up, yeah. which has got, it's, of course, good and bad. The safety is a concern, but the revenue and people coming to downtown Cocoa Beach is also good. Yep, like, foot traffic. Foot, yeah, down, so. yeah. Helps other businesses. Excuse me, I have a suggestion here. So, in looking at the rendition there, and that being the corner of Minuteman and A1A. Nope. Yep. Okay. Okay. What's to say you didn't have that walk around access into the greener space, but have the Kelly Slater statue right there? Like That's that we were, we were just, that we were just was, talking about that. There's yeah. a possibility of putting it there as the the city hall, making Kelly our city hall sign, yeah. in the sense of a in and doing we could do the whole bench around it like you guys were discussing and people can sit in front of it and get a photo too right so exactly. if you yeah. prop cool. him up you can prop him up high enough to where he's not going to block the view and you push him back just a smidge but lift them up. and even if they stand on the bench you still right. are, they're still not climbing on the actual right. statue they're right. taking a photo yes. on the bench right. versus climbing and that's into the, the right. city yeah. hall sign versus right. a what if that is 
Yeah, I, I don't know what that is, but yeah. Um, it's definitely the heart right you. there too. Yeah. That little intersection, yeah. that corner is like the downtown yep. that on Minuteman, so. And being the devil's advocate, <laughs> my very first thought when we first started talking about this green space in town, not with yeah. you guys, but in town, is somebody plowing it through with their vehicle. Yep. Because look what happened to the DOT's right. south end. Sure, so south being thing. parked at the, that corner for the last five years and having, I was in the clerk's office, I was on the first floor facing the A1A, facing out this way. Mm -hmm. Majority of the car accidents that happened in that area actually was on the Romano building side. Oh, was it? Never okay. on our side. No okay. car had ever gone through our okay. side. Um, it's always been that other side. I don't know why. I don't know the something trajectory. about the logic so just some, i think it's because it's one way and people are coming across in a van and that's when mm -hmm. it happens or yeah. someone runs a red light and hits somebody on the right side not sure the logistics but it's for the last five years it was never on our but side but with the influx of people coming into right. our town now it i mean change. there's we've got crazies everywhere mm -hmm. i mean and mm -hmm. you know so i was just what, for safety say? purposes for i was hoping we were going to do something cool. right there on the corner that what would fall deter that from happening right there. Fair the the bollards? Yeah, well, it's similar to what you see like in front of a, a like you pull up at a 7-Eleven and they've got the big rack of propane tanks. They have the big concrete bollards there so you mm -hmm. can't drive through. And, Something you know, protection. Some yeah. protection of yeah. it. We can right. look at it possibly put in there, but it matches the It looks like part it, of it. Yes. Maybe it's wave-like. I don't know. Yes, sir, Tony. Oh, that would be cool. Be, you know, like a curve with a corner. If we look at uh, what we've been talking about with, with the pavers, with those elevated rain guards, even just a couple of feet with with a wall around, that pretty much is your protection there. Mm -hmm. That's one thing. The other thing I just wanted to say was we we're talking about you know how big Spring Break and how many people and all this. I, you know, I think one. One thing that we might want to consider is, and I'm not saying not to use it for a Friday fest or whatever, maybe in the slower season, it would be perfect to do it then. But also, you know, to kind of consider this being, you know, while it's an attraction for everybody to come downtown and enjoy, kind of focus on our own community as this is our like, kind of place of respite. You know, mm -hmm. maybe have some quiet music on the weekend that's not a big, giant, ginormous party scene. It's just kind of a local place. Like we used to do the, the movies in the park. And, you know, we get 100, 200 people show up and watch a movie, you know, and it was all, it was all local, so it was kind of cool. So just maybe an idea, I said, okay, think of that as a concept. I'd like to see them be able to do yoga or Tai Chi mm -hmm. or something there. Exactly. That would be awesome. Yeah. Wouldn't that be nice? Yep. Mm -hmm. And if possible. Yeah. So. We could work with our, I think our rec center, I think the rec center or leisure services is going to be in charge of the the, the stage. I'm not going to, uh, the stage so get the plays out there or music or, so that could be something that they have those, um, my husband's been doing a lot of the specialty yoga events around yeah. town. He actually, mm -hmm. they've rented um, down by the golf course, the, the pavilion, the pavilion and oh, stuff. Yeah. And it is very much like yeah. a I different really pace of yoga. Way. It's like, it's a DJ yoga, but it's not what you, it's not like a nightclub yoga. Um, <laughs> so they do like uh, static dance and, okay. and different stuff. And they're always drumming up like new ideas in this, this space, honestly. Um, would be a, yeah, awesome yeah. for him to be able to offer something like that yeah. for people, something different. Then you have that you have that space underneath the building in case the, it's planned but it rains and you yeah, don't that's, that's or it's another can. problem in area to be not to bring up the bar again. But one thing that my husband's big concern is is like rainy season comes it, like I don't when they designed it they didn't plan that well. They have the stage piece, but he's very concerned about speakers and setting up tents mm -hmm. over it. And he's like I can't move all this stuff in a, if it rained real quick and yeah. so. Right now it's not a problem, but come summer, those things will become every afternoon. And a couple trees, believe it or not, also gives you a little bit of something. It's mm -hmm. not necessarily gonna stop you from getting wet, but yep. complete open area is not uh, right. So what you're saying that's not good. <laughs> I'm saying <laughs> just another we wanna 
take what we're seeing, honestly, they're a nice, not a test run, but they are in a way, like we're seeing what's not working there for them, mm -hmm. or could potentially be an issue as people that live here that are like, did they think that through? Who knows, maybe they do have a plan, but you're able to kind of be like, what's well, not do that here? Obviously it's a totally different place, it's a venue, but we're not using it the way the bar is using right. it. But let's well, and, and to add to that, talking about, you know, rain and speakers, you know, maybe uh, a, a removable canopy space uh, over the stage. There, you is, know, there is a little. That is, that is part of the plan there. I, awesome. I don't know if it's um, removable yeah. per se. Some kind of protection. Yeah, there is some kind of protection. The, Very similar to what they have. The original design, they didn't smart. have a yeah. roof on, on the stage, and no. they've added a roof to the stage yeah. because of rain. Yeah, Coco Village definitely knows what they're doing mm -hmm. on that level mm -hmm. when yeah. it comes to those venues that they put on. Yeah, so, yeah. yes. So, Walker, uh, I, I guess that we'll probably wrap it up, and, and I apologize, I can't pull up the actual agenda, but I just want to make sure uh, if, if maybe they've already been doing it, because I don't know who's talking who's not, but make sure we have public comment uh, before we close, please. Yes, so, so, <laughs> yeah, Leslie's here with Main Street. She is our, our public um, attendance, okay. but as a formality, I do want to open it up to public comment. Leslie, do you have anything else that you wanted to add? I touched on all my points, yeah. thank you. There we go. Are you on this committee also? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, I didn't see your name on here. So oh, no. Know. We yeah, weren't well, sure, we weren't sure if, a, if Dr. Smallwood was going to make it. Got gotcha. it. I, I cannot yeah. believe you're here. It's fantastic. <laughs> I'm so glad to have you. So, <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Oh, besides, Robin will be excited. Yeah. So, Leslie is our, our unofficial sixth member, I guess you could say. So, yeah. Um, so, real seventh member. Thank you. <laughs> so, let me run through my notes. Uh, it, it's going to be reiterating a lot of what Karen just said. So one is we collectively agree Kelly Slater statue should be moved to some location within the green space. Another portion of that is protection of the statue from people and the elements. Um, I will get with Wayne. We'll, we'll be able to scale the, the Kelly Slater statue on these drawings and they can incorporate that in here of the, the engineering architectural firm. Previous papers, rain gardens. Big, everyone is a big fan of that. Um, the committee is strongly opposed to the use of artificial turf um, mm -hmm. for all of the reasons that we discussed. I would I'm not big on grass either. I don't know how everybody okay. else feels. Yeah. So, so leaning yeah. heavily towards Kirby's permits okay. paver and rain gardens in, and, in this particular yeah, area. Yeah, and beds. And beds. Yep. So when I say rain gardens, that's kind of what I mean. Beds. Is, the beds. Is flower yeah. beds. Could we? Could we? Uh, is there? And, and again, I, I, I didn't hear everything. Are we in agreement or is this still up in the air to possibly elevate those rain gardens? Yeah, I think that so. Well, yes. As opposed to putting ropes and fences or chains around. Yeah, and I think that's a discussion we will have to have with the stormwater engineer who will be working on this, on the landscape, well, the landscape architect as well. Um, the only potential challenge that I see with elevated rain gardens is their ability to treat. Sorry, I'm thinking out loud here. Okay, and you know what? And I and I know where you're going, Walker. How about this? If we did that, the elevated, and maybe put you know a, a little bit lower along the edges, like French drains, mm -hmm. and, yep. and the pervious material. Yep that would go into the under you know the underground the storm water system yeah. or we could incorporate like the gothic style spiked fence that <laughs> like prevents anybody from climbing over it <laughs> <laughs> it's the only other option that i can think of but but yes so so let me put that elevated elevated just, okay. just an idea. We could do some research on it and bring it back to our next meeting. It, it, yep. it just seems so practical. One, you know, it, it, they look really good. You could interspace them all around. You could still see over them. You know, there's, and, and they look really good. Yeah. And they bring the gardens up where people can see it better. 
can look at them and enjoy them. Right. And, so and just an idea, and you know, we can still do the stormwater stuff with, you know, on a French frame. And I've seen those French frames where they're literally cut out of the stove so you could put them right within the pavers. Right. Okay. Well, and if you elevated that, you could have that as seated too. And, and again, mm -hmm. I don't want like backing up. That's what I was going to say. Just push my ideas, but you know, yeah. 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 somebody likes that or doesn't mm -hmm. want to speak up. Yeah, no, I, I think I think we're all in agreement with that. Um, I'll check with. Um, 99% sure that Jacobs has a landscape architect that is involved in this, uh, but I need to talk to Wayne about that. Um, obviously, native vegetation is a big thing to be incorporated into the flower bed rain gardens. It's just a, it's just a great opportunity yep. to do that. Absolutely, mm -hmm. along with yeah. uh, you know the not all of it has to be that but. education component. And um, we want some shade. Yes, shade, shade trees. That's whether it's one. trees or yep. if it's. Um, something that we construct so it's more structural or or uh, more of a statue top not a statue but you know an art piece right it can be either or, or a combination okay so it's got that um, we will make sure that we get a copy of this pamphlet sent out to everyone in here i can get your email and share it with you as well sure um also going to look into the I dream of genie statue. I will look at the okay. I dream of genie statue or the, the whatever that bronze statue. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I will look at that. I will also make it a point, and if you all have an opportunity to go down to check I'll out the, the city of Cape Canaveral, I'll get I'll reach out to city staff there to see if they incorporated green stormwater infrastructure into that 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 um, paved area that they have the rain gardens in. I, I'm assuming they did, but I don't know for sure. Um, and then obviously we want this to be accommodating for a wide variety of activities like we talked about yoga, bands, you know, Overflow something from Friday. Yep. There. Bocce yeah. ball, that's that's mm -hmm. another thing. And on that note, and I think we can probably pick that discussion up next meeting we have. It was brought up about the potential for activities for kids. Mm -hmm. What that is, I know people have talked about a splash pad. My I don't have any direct experience with splash pads. My understanding is operation and maintenance of the pumps a lot, is super challenging. They're they're expensive to install. I know. And what, what did you say about the city? So Cape, I don't know. Cape Canaveral just opened one, and then within a week it closed, and then it opened back up, and then it closed that's again. What I saw. And that's, that's yes. probably what it is because they have a brand new splash pad, and um, it's closed right now. Well, we have a water park right now that's out at the pool that hasn't been operating for right. and that's, that's quite uh, some time. That's, 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 yeah. uh, that is hey, a Walker? Yes, sir. Uh, I, a couple of things. One, I love to see a splash pad, but I don't think that, you know, I'm, I'm, you know honestly, the stage we're talking about, you can only fit so much in mm -hmm. before it becomes a limit. You know what that is? Yep. 10 cows at a five pound bag. It just doesn't, there's just so much room and so many things you can put in there and you don't want to put so much stuff in there that all of a sudden it loses its the function. Yep. You're going to have a clash of things happening. I love them. Yeah, I'd love to see a splash pad somewhere in downtown. If we could find a space to do that, how killer that would be, but I don't think this is the right spot just because of the room. Now, and, and while I still got it because I know we're wrapping up uh, and, I, and I may have missed this at the beginning but um, uh, we are under sunshine correct Walker that is correct so just so everybody I think most everybody on this group knows what we can and can't do but just to remind everybody we're under sunshine right um, you know, we have to get together to look at something somewhere uh, we, we can't talk about these issues that we might be that might be voted on Yep, agreed. So, um, are, are we going to schedule another meeting uh, at this meeting? Actually, yes. That Well, what I will do is we will send out some optional dates for the next couple weeks um, and see if we can all collectively agree on a day and time. We have been told, and I don't know how this works for everyone who is involved in this task force, they want to push it to afternoons or ish because that opens up the opportunity for more 
of the public to attend 10 in the morning on a Wednesday it doesn't work for a lot of people who have regular jobs. So that's what we're going to be targeting over the next couple weeks. What those days are, I don't know. I know that I will be out of town. The only time I'm probably going to be that it could affect any of this before your date is the fifth through the, um, I think it's just the ninth, but it might be the 10th. So that's okay. like next week, just so that as you're figuring that out, um, yep. I will be gone. It doesn't, next week is a tough week for me as well. Okay, so. beyond that, I'm pretty flexible okay. though, because I can yeah. leave my job whenever. Okay. Because we do have to meet, um, as a group as well, with the City Hall Task Force. Okay. So we can kind of blend everything together. So it kind of looks like we have a cohesive uh, city hall things. with our green space. So we will meet with them. So that will probably be more of an hour and a half because there'll be 10 of us plus the public. Um, and then at that, after that point, we'll, um, Wayne and, and Wayne and Walker will put the suggestions together for um, So they want to have like a like other meetings where the general public can watch and come up and have comments right. that they want mm -hmm. to have. Yep. Okay. Exactly. And that will be before right. April 18th? Yes. yes. So I, yep. I, I did that, Walker, so that will probably be the country club, correct? Yes. That's correct. So the meetings moving forward will we'll be, be at the country the, club. Yeah, we will have them at the country club. We're going to push them to later in the afternoon, 4 o'clock. Mm -hmm. um, that way it's, you know, it will encourage more public attendance for those but, who but, and Walker, you'll you'll make sure they don't overlap with the electric vehicle task force, correct? That's correct. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. All right. Well, I, I think that is all we have. Any final comments from the? I was committee? just wondering how many people in this room think that I, I dream of Jamie's statue would would be good. Um, I think it would be another fun thing that correlates with Cocoa Beach, so I don't have like any opposition to it. Um, I mean, I don't have any like negative opinion of it as far as that goes, so I'm kind of not irrelevant, but. If we do a statue walk or, or tour, that'd be kind of cool to I think that could you know, move people around the city. That's one other an, an addition. More things that um, stand out, I guess, as Cocoa Beach. Right. Yeah. And Walker, just as, a, uh, as you're beginning to close and asking for last comment, I just want to say, you know, you know again, I apologize. I first time being there and just kind of amazing, but uh, um, as much for you all as it is for me, but uh, what, what a great group and, and good meeting. And Walker, thank you for doing such a good job. Yeah, absolutely. I really appreciate everyone's willingness, especially last minute, to jump in on this. Um, you know, these, as is typically the case of these, they, they become quagmires because everybody's trying to coordinate their schedules. And, well, I appreciate uh, being um, asked to be part of it. Yeah, so. absolutely. Well, yeah. well, thank you all very much. So with that, Tony, if you...